You either use the internet for fun or you use the internet to grow. You're here to grow. Welcome to TRS Clips. Who's the toughest opponent that you've ever faced on a cricket field? Toughest opponent, I think, um, A.B. De Villiers. Okay. Uh, I love playing with him, but I, I felt like he's one player I did not... I just wished when I was against him that he got out early because I mm. knew he could win the game from any position. Toughest bowler has been uh, Rashid Khan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He's had my number a few times. So. Okay. Yeah. The biggest distraction for young cricketers is... Mm. Uh, I just feel too much money too early. Yeah. Okay. Like I just feel and no and no uh, guidance. Guidance. Like good guidance. So how did you like handle it? I didn't get like too much money straight away. Like I said, everything in my career has been step by step and like like started really slowly and played for a for a few years on a really basic contract. And and then I think when I was I, I got my first big contract when I was in 2018, I think 25, 26. By then, I had had a few ups and downs in my career, and that teaches you a lot, and you're a lot more like balanced in your mind. Um, so yeah, I mean, even for me initially, I did like go like bonkers with like the first big check and like uh, a little bit, but really, very, I realized it very fast, and like I, I calmed down a little bit and being started being more smart about how I use that money and investing and like seeing like I said like um, something other than other doing something other than cricket um, also like in terms of like investing the, investing that money and looking after like my future and stuff okay yeah. Yeah. what did it feel like to see that bag suddenly what's the emotion as a guy oh man it was I mean I think life changed drastically after that like I think all of us work so hard to, to secure our future and to to feel financially like stable right and when you when that starts happening like there's a huge weight off your back like for me I felt like it was a huge weight off me and I I didn't really have to worry about oh how will I earn a good living in my life mm. that was happening so I could completely and entirely focus my energy on on becoming a good cricketer and like performing really well being a good athlete and and you know spending time with my family and all of those things became more important to me because I knew this was taken care of mm. if this wasn't taken care of I'd probably still be chasing you know yeah I mean it's quite natural I think yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. as cricketers when you're fielding are you very aware of what the fans are saying because we try getting your attention correct right? all you, the time. you can hear like all these things you can hear you but hear comments yeah you can you can hear comments okay. like if it's if it's coming from really close to the boundary line you can hear but if it's if it's very noisy then then it's just like zzz, you know has something just, like yeah. pissed you off like someone's comment yeah yeah a lot of times a lot of times more um because they don't realize like they they get angry they keep calling for you right when you're on the boundary line and all they want is for you to turn back and say hello or like <laughs> wave wave your hand or um do all of those things you you do it you do it when when you're coming back but when when the over is happening they still expect you to turn back and wave but they don't realize that the captain is going to like give us a like it is we've been told before like when we enter the ground that when the over is happening all six balls your eyes need to be on the captain or the bowler or the wicket keeper because there will be slight changes that he might make he might not look at you he will just look there and say KL move this way because mm. there's a strategy he's doing with with the bowler or say come ahead or go back there are there are slight changes that will happen so he mm. wants his he wants your attention there and once the over is done then you can like interact with the crowd do whatever dance for them wave at them do whatever but and that time the crowd doesn't know that they want you like kyu bau kha raha hai ghoom ja you know say hello all those things that that's when you're like are let me focus like if i drop a catch you're going to mm. you're going to get pissed off right mm. so i don't want to drop a catch i want to focus here and i don't want to your gali from my captain also <laughs> so yeah but either way when you're there you're going to get gali from there also you're going to get gali from behind also so it's yeah what does it feel like when you drop a catch um i mean we all know good. what it feels like i just want to hear a cricket yeah not like good not good cuz you, you know yeah. eyeballs are on you and everything not that because it is just it is the only thing i feel in in sport that 
doesn't need any luck right it is pure practice and it's pure hard work fielding wow okay. right like you don't need luck you 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 can see the ball coming to you you have enough time to react a few things maybe it's it's luck when you dive and like you know whether it get sometimes you hold the ball and when you fall down it pops out because you don't break your fall so those things might be luck but generally like high catches or like straight forward catches you should be able to take and you work work really hard for it and and like i said bowlers it's it's a thankless job for bowlers like they're running in fast bowlers especially in 50 degrees and they're sweating and they come and bowl and then you're not supporting them you feel that you're letting the team down and when a drop catch happens in the team there's like a there's not a great vibe that that spreads right mm. you know like people feel like are this guy is not not switched on and another guy will feel like are you know his energy you 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 manage to create like a dip in energy for 11 players on the field and that's not a nice feeling See? and obviously you know that people are going to like uh, you feel like yeah. you've let your teammates down Correct. basically yeah. Yeah. Dude, I didn't know this that it's only yeah. down to practice. It is, I think. Mostly okay. it is down to practice. Another yeah. silly fan question. Yeah. What's made Ravindra Jadeja that kind of a fielder, dude? Like you, I'm sure you all also notice his like yeah. Yeah. magic tricks Correct. on the field. All yeah. of us have also. What's special? Is it something in his body? I think he's a really gifted athlete. He's this very very supremely um fast. Uh he's got a great arm which I'm sure like growing up he's worked a lot but I've only known Jadeja since he was 25 26 when he's already part of the Indian team. I've not seen his journey growing up and what he had to do. So I'm guessing like in his early days he really worked a lot on his on his fielding and all of that but he was blessed with with speed to the ball and just generally in the field you see is like he's really really fast. So um when you have that and then you work a little bit towards it you become like a really okay. um unbeatable to that type of fielder and everyone fears jadeja when the ball goes to him you're already saying no i'm not taking a chance with jadeja that's the impact he has in world cricket when the ball goes to him people are okay take it easy i'm not <laughs> going to challenge this man okay. yeah okay i can visualize as a little kid in saurashtra killing pigeons or something with stones and then maybe goes up to so that's why i said i don't know the journey of how he's gotten so good at uh, fielding but okay. i know like once he's gotten to the international level okay. yeah. you you enjoy keeping yeah i do i do w- yeah. what's the enjoyment the enjoyment is that you're in the game every ball when when you're fielding you can you can tend to like switch off sometimes right you know in a test match you know the ball's not going to come to you every ball even in a one day game you know every ball's not going to come to you t20 maybe t20 you're like okay you need to so 120 balls the le- energy levels are really high you're like you have to be focused like any time the ball can come but wicket keeper any format regardless of what situation you're in you're in the game all the time you're seeing what the bowler is doing you're seeing what the batsman is doing you have a responsibility to tell your captain um like you you can influence him to change certain strategies because you you have a you have the best view of the pitch the condition the batsman um yeah all of this like it keeps you in the game so it's okay. it's more fun Are you getting pissed off that I'm asking so many cricket nerd questions? No, no. Like I, you can yeah. talk about cricket like yeah, you enjoy yeah, talking day, about cricket. All day. All It's day. not like it gets too much or something. No, this part of it I enjoy because these are not like really like these are not questions that people generally ask, right? This is um more into the mind of a cricketer. It's not just like surface level like questions like oh how did you feel when you scored that 100? Obviously I felt happy. How am I going <laughs> to feel, right? Uh but yeah, those kind of questions after a while you're like even in 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 uh post game interviews and stuff is the same same questions that we get asked right how was the pitch how did you play how did you feel it uh-huh. like yeah those are again we do it so much we have to do it so we we do it so when outside of the field or in a conversation someone asks the same questions you're like are new clips released at the same time that a podcast releases this is trs clips make sure you subscribe